All right. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on when you're watching this video. I'm Rachel Goldsworthy, and I'm checking in with you on the drive home to Hawkesbury. And today we've got a lucky guest. It's Vicky Cook joined us. Thank you for coming along today, Vicky. Thank you, Rachel. Good yeah. Job. And Vicky's uh, got a company called Inspired Change and looks after the different foods, raw foods, and I guess um, it's something that a lot of people want to get into but don't really know how. But uh, tell me a little bit about what got you into raw food and why you like making things raw and eating raw um, foods as part of your daily living. Uh, I got into raw, I've been on a raw food, well I've been on a food journey since I was 19 which is over 20 years ago. Right. And initially it started off for weight loss. I was told I was fat and had to lose weight and I was a dancer. Right. So I wasn't fat. No. And from that I've played around, tried to lose weight and I got to a point where I realised it was not about weight loss, it was about health and vitality. Perfect. Yeah. And so then I've been looking at ways to improve my health, improve my vitality, energy. Yes. Because this is the only vehicle that I have from birth to death. So I want to be able to do everything that I possibly can. Everybody wants to do that, <laughs> don't they? <laughs> so I was introduced to raw food about five years ago. And for me, it was a light bulb moment. It was like, this is what I've been looking for. The philosophy behind raw food. Yeah, for and sure. And I started playing with it with my partner. And so we, at the time I was eating meat. Yes. We were both eating meat. And so we went what would be called raw paleo. So we ate meat, but everything else was raw. Okay. And my energy levels improved. This fog that I didn't even realise I had lifted. Wow. Clarity. Yeah. Everybody wants clarity. Everybody <laughs> wants to get rid of the fog, don't we? <laughs> and I just felt amazing. Wow. Isn't that great? That's awesome. So I've then been experimenting. I'm now vegetarian. Um, How long have you been a vegetarian for? Only 18 months. Okay. Only 18 yeah. months. But I just, again, feel that it's the next step in my journey. Sure. I did do a month of 100% raw, just yes. to experiment to see how, what it would be like to yes. be 100% raw. And, oh, incredible. <laughs> incredible. Because we hear a lot of people, they talk about, oh, I'm feeling sluggish, or I'm feeling this, or I'm feeling that, and how am I going to change it? What do I need to do? Um, and then what you're saying is by just eating the right things, adjusting the diet a little bit, you can feel you know, a lot more energised, you feel great about yourself. You probably you know, might lose weight by default mm -hmm. anyway yep. because you're eating less processed foods and less mm -hmm. fats and sugars. Um, but that's great. Maybe you can share with us some of the foods that you've made here um, with what, what you've been doing to give people an idea as to what the raw food looks like. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. definitely. Terrific, thank you. So what I've got here is an apple and pecan muesli. So, okay. So everything that's on this bench is raw. Yes. It's also gluten free, dairy free, okay. additives, preservatives. So wow. it's basically vegan, not saying that you have to be a vegan to no. eat this way. What's the definition of a vegan for people watching this okay. with us? So vegan is no animal products. Okay. So that would be no dairy, no meat. Yes. But it, and depending on the person, it could also include no honey. Because okay. that comes from, from a bee. Sure. But not saying that you have to eat this way. No. You can, as in being a vegan, you can have this and still have a piece of meat with, with it. Yes. Or still have some fish or dairy. Okay. But it just gives you an idea. It's more than those lettuce, tomato. Yes, yes, because eating lettuce, tomato and cucumber and a bit of meat it adds a, a different, as you were saying before, a texture to the food that you're eating and also something that's a bit more exciting and, um, you know, something that hasn't been seen before and they always say that it's good to have the growth with, within what we're doing in life. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so, um, so this one is a breakfast, is it? That's a breakfast. Okay, terrific. Um, you could also have it for Yeah, dessert. sure. Just, just adding some nut milk to it. Lovely. Then we have here some... That looks fabulous, by the way, beautiful colours. So this is broccoli and cauliflower rice. No, really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you could have, so you could have a meat curry, yes. have this and pour, pour wow. that Wow, that looks fantastic, mm. yeah. yeah. And then we have some crackers. Crackers. So everybody wants dips and crackers when you go to these barbecues, that they have all these delicious things of cheese and all the rest of it that you probably shouldn't be eating if you're on some sort of healthy kick, but this is an alternative. This is an alternative. Great. So this is a, a oregano and chive cream cheese. Wow. So no dairy. Okay. And then we've got some crackers, so you get wow. that, that crunch as well. Yeah, sure. 
And so you've made those crackers yourself. I've made those crackers. You don't buy them from the local. You, you can buy them. You can? If you've got a dehydrator or you turn your oven on to the lowest, lowest setting. Yes. Then you can make crackers yourself. And the principle of the dehydrator? Is, well the principle, the whole principle of raw is that nothing is heated over 40 degrees. Okay. And therefore you're not losing any of the enzymes and digestive right, okay. um, parts of it. The, and the life force about it. Sure. Sure. So that's the, the main principle is nothing is heated over 40 degrees. Yes. But it doesn't mean you have to eat cold stuff. Like no. Okay. You can, so you can have a bit of warmth to the food that we're eating. Yeah, yeah for sure. If you make a soup, so you blend it all up. Okay. You don't cook it at all. No. And then you put it on the stove top and you warm it that you can stick your finger in. That's still classed as a raw soup. Okay. If you put your finger in, you burn your finger. You, yes. Well, Burnt your finger, but you've also taken it over that 40 degrees, yeah. so it's now not classed as raw. So the Russian beetroot soup might get you get, get away with that because they yeah. like to serve that cold, don't yep. they? All yep. re relatively cool. Yeah. So no, that's terrific, mm. excellent. And then this one, this is probably my favourite. That looks delicious. That absolutely. <laughs> I just want to get a fork and just get straight into it. So that's a satay almond veggies. Wow. Okay, and it's where you've got mushrooms and parsley and a few other bits and pieces uh, in there. Parsley, carrot, zucchini, uh, coriander, mint is in there. And wow. It's just, and it's so... It smells fine. fantastic as well. Yeah, really, really delicious. And then, of course, everyone wants dessert. Of course we do. Just like the best to last. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a raw chocolate brownie. Yum. Raw chocolate, so no cooking whatsoever. Really? No cooking whatsoever. One would ask how you would cook a brownie without putting it in the oven. <laughs> but Vicky cooked up it very well. <laughs> that looks delicious. Like it looks like it's got half chocolate and half of the brownie consistency. It does. Yeah. There and, there and then there's a ganache. And so everything that's on this counter, yes. I actually teach wow. in, in the workshop. Okay. Plus more. So that people will walk away with 28 recipes. Really wow, easy. 28 recipes, that will be said. All you need to do is just follow the recipe. Just follow the recipe? Yeah. And you will have tasted probably about 18 of the recipes okay. on, on the day. And I talk about how to transition to raw. Yes. More raw. Now, more is more for, for what you want. That yes. That might be, I just want to increase it by this small amount. Yes. Or I want to go full out and I want to try and do 80% raw, 100% okay. raw. Yeah. But it comes back to working out where you are, what your lifestyle is. Sure. And the type of person you are. Mm. And so I talk about how you can tr transition and Good. then about menu planning yeah. and how to bring that in. Okay. And in regards to menu planning and the foods, and a lot of people struggle, like late at night they might duck up to the servo and get that ice mm -hmm. cream or, or worse if mm -hmm. it's open. Or, you know, if people are craving salty foods or fatty foods or sugary foods, is there anything particular that you can head them in the direction with the workshops to work towards? Yep, so with the sugary foods or the, yes. the sweet side of things, yes. the chocolate brownie, the cheesecake that's taught. Yes, um, cheesecake is delicious <laughs> by the way, I love the cheesecake that she made. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's your, your sweet side of yes. things. If you're looking for the savoury side of things, yes. then like the cream cheese, um, the, the sake veggies, depending on how much, what the salt side of things is. You can even tam make tamari um, nuts. Okay. And that's your, yeah. your salt. That's it. Want yeah, for sure. And is there a reason why people navigate to certain foods? Is it wired before, like in once, what, whatever mummy eats whilst we're in her tummy, or is it something that's a learned behaviour? Um, all of the above and more. <laughs> So, I'll take We're talking to blame somebody else for our food addictions, aren't we? But uh, my mum's lovely, by the way, and I think that she's just a wonderful, delightful person, and um, she's always put plenty of food on our table. But uh, I think she'll be excited to see some of these recipes too, because out of the millions of recipes that she has, and we have some delicious meals on the, the dinner table with her, she'll be very excited to see this. So, well, we'll start with we'll start with sweet because yes. a lot of people do crave yeah. sweets. Yeah, for sure. So yes, there is a chemical reaction like in chocolate and sweets. And okay. You that, that happiness feeling. Sure. But when we crave sweets, it's usually because we're feeling low or right. sad. Okay. I mean, you see on the TV the classic picture of a woman in front of the TV eating ice cream because she's been dumped by her boyfriend. <laughs> and and so 
it's, it's that sense of loneliness of yes. lost connection. Okay. And I want to feel connected again. Sure. So I'm going to eat some ice cream. So I'm going to eat some ice cream yeah. and more chocolate because yeah. it gives you a sense of connection. It's really only a band-aid okay. side of things. Sure. But that's what the craving is. It, it can be a sense of connection. It can be a sense of, I call them sweet moments, of where you have, it gives your life meaning. Why oh. are you here? Sure. And if you don't have a sense of meaning in your life, we go for sweets. Okay. So it's so to work with the craving side of things is then going, okay, well, how do I get a sense of meaning into my life? Because then you crave sweets less. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that could be incorporated in the food as well as the hobbies that people have, hobbies the people that they associate with, yeah, all those sorts of things. In the morning. Sure. Um, yeah. No, it's certainly not to go and, and go to work and to pay the bills. <laughs> you might love what you're doing and that's fabulous. Yes. But if you don't love what you're doing, it's eight hours of just to pay for the electricity and the gas and the, the rent. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. So everyone's got a strong way, right? yeah. yeah. purpose, a sense of purpose, and feel good about themselves. And I think too, this food's going to help them do that. What about the fatty foods? If somebody's craving fatty foods versus the sugary foods? That's comfort as well. Okay. Yeah, it's, a sense of, it's a sense of fulfillment yes. inside. Because fatty foods are a thing. Yes. So there's an emptiness inside. Okay. For whatever reason. And this is where we need to drill down to find out for you what that emptiness yeah. is. Yeah. But the fatty foods are a sense of Feeling. Wow. Yes, I'm, I'm fulfilled in my life. Yeah, sure. Okay. No, that's really interesting. And today, oh, oh, I oh. Now, people, if you were here, you would taste that. That is just divine. And I'm sure the texture's within the... I won't embarrass myself by putting it in my mouth and trying <laughs> to try at the same time as I'm having a chat to Vicky. But that looks delicious. And I have been to Vicky's raw food um, workshops that she's done. And they're really good fun. I mean, there's just a lot of people that go... A lot of people from different walks of life that want to start the raw journey for different reasons. And I think that with what Vicky does, she starts from the beginning with everybody. Mm. So, and it's a good place to be because you just want to know where you're at, where you want to be, and how to get there, essentially. Yes. And I think a lot of people, uh, you can probably debunk this myth that everyone thinks it's A, it's expensive to, to buy raw food, B, it's too hard, takes too long, I've got a family of five and I don't want to eat a separate meal to what Johnny's eating. Um, tell me about how long it takes, is it difficult, is it as hard as they say or is this something that anybody could pretty much pick up from what you're saying? Anyone could pretty much pick up. Okay. Uh, basic kitchen equipment would be ideally a blender, it sure. doesn't have to be something like what I've got no. and a food processor, but you can start off with just a knife and a, a chopping board. Great. And yes, you could spend hours in the kitchen, Yes. like anything. But everything that I teach is can be made within from taking the ingredients out of the fridge to then washing up 20 to 30 minutes. Yeah, sure. And with regards to feeding a family, I have um, two children and a partner. Both my children still eat meat. So what I do is I prepare something like this. So say the rice. Rice. And yes. Yes. And cook some meat. Great. So then that's on the side with the meat. Brilliant. I have that. Yeah. I don't have the meat. Yeah. My daughter at times will go without the meat. So that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. And so this, this then becomes the accompaniment yes. to the meat. It's yes. not I have to make no. something completely different. No. I might bake some potatoes and have that with this and the meat. Great options to have yeah. as a family because yeah. I think you need that flexibility in anything that you do. And by doing these different meals, everybody gets a choice and there probably is going to be a favourite. Like, I mean, I shouldn't be saying this on camera, but um, Straight Tuesday was all my favourite day because it was pancakes and mum yeah. used to make these beautiful pancakes. It becomes part of what you do, you know. Mm. So whether it's, you know, the raw food or whether it's a, a bit of meat and the salads and mm. the alternatives that you have, I think this is fantastic and I think a lot of people would really enjoy that. And there's, there's a couple of different workshops that they can get involved with from what you were saying before. One is just an introduction to it and then the other one is a, a more hands-on. Um, well I've got fundamentally raw yes. is, is takes you through from breakfast to dessert.